Hey everyone, how are you doing? Now, it's pretty funny to go through the first rough draft for Star Wars, seeing where George's thoughts and ideas really started and how they molded into the Star Wars saga that we know today. Now, one thing I hear a lot of fans talk about with the prequels is that there are a lot of Senate debates. It almost gets too political, even though that is one of the center points of the whole story. And it's important to know those different political debates so that you can understand why everything is happening the way it is. Anyways, there were a lot of those similar debates in the original script for Star Wars. Now, why are we gonna talk about that today when the title is about Luke? Well, to introduce those for the first time, Luke was actually in a lot of those scripts. General Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, both very different from what they would become in the films. But this is their very first introduction ever. And this version of Skywalker is also kinda cool. I'm glad we got the Luke that we got. He is my favorite and my most iconic hero growing up. But this one wouldn't have been so bad either. And what's interesting is that Luke and Vader are opposing military strategists instead of dueling warriors. Vader wants to invade the planet Luke is defending. Anyways, here we go, let me read. Meanwhile on Alderaan, capital of the new empire, the emperor and his henchmen plot the final elimination of the planet Aquilae, and the last of the Jedi. Governor Hodak has been appointed the first lord of the Aquilian system and surrounding territories, and he talks with Darth Vader a tall, grim-looking general about the conquest of Aquilae. Vader thinks it will be a difficult fight because General Skywalker is leading the defenses. However, on Aquilae, Count Sandage, or Sandage, a corrupt noble, counsels King Chaos to give in to the Emperor. General Skywalker, a large man in his 60s, interrupts the Senate meeting. They argue about the course of action, with Skywalker pushing for active resistance, and the Senators for a surrender of the status quo, including Grand Moff Tarkin, who wears long black robes of the Aquilian region. The meeting is adjourned with the king saying, may the force of others be with you all. In the war room, Skywalker tells his aide to put everyone on alert. Suddenly, a giant asteroid or moon is detaching itself from the Anchorhead system and heading their way. It's as big as our third moon, they say. In the Palace of Light, the king and queen watch the two giant twin suns set in the green sky. Skywalker and Anakin, who is Luke's young Jedi apprentice, arrive and report that Kane, Anakin's father, has gone to the spaceport of Gordon to meet an old friend, Han Solo, the Eurelian. Skywalker again pushes for war, but the king wants to get the approval of his allies first, and departs on a mission to Amzil to meet with the full assembly. Now, this is where I'm gonna end it because a lot of it is kinda dry, uh, for me even to read this and explain it to you. So if you are interested, I can make more videos about this, but I basically just wanted to say that Luke Skywalker's first ever introduction to Star Wars was this guy. Old Man Luke makes me kind of think of Clint Eastwood or, you know, the declining Wolverine in Logan. Kind of a tough old bastard and warhawk that you don't want to mess with, but he's definitely now old. I kind of like him to be honest, but of course, had Lucas kept that character, the whole Luke, I'm your father thing would have made Vader kind of in his 90s or something, which would basically be the same thing, but everyone would be geriatric. Now I realize that General Skywalker isn't the stand-in for Luke. Anakin Starkiller is. The General is obviously an early concept of Obi-Wan Kenobi. So what about Darth Vader? Here, he isn't a Sith, so Darth is his name and not a title. In fact, I don't really even think it is a title in A New Hope either. Obi-Wan calls him Darth because that's what maybe his name was supposed to be in the original script, and then maybe they changed it later. In this draft, he is a very cunning military officer. He's much more of a Tarkin type of character or villain. But just like General Skywalker is more of an Obi-Wan than a Luke, there is another character that I'm going to cover in a different episode that fills in for the Dark Lord of the Sith. So what do you think? What if instead of Vader being a Sith Lord, he was still a main villain, but just a more brilliant military mind, kind of like Thrawn. Of course, I wouldn't want this to happen, but it is interesting to think where George was writing all these characters down and the ideas he had for them before they became who they became today. Everything kind of starts somewhere. It's cool to see. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you want me to cover more of this stuff, and I will see you in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.